Emergency webinar QE 5.0 has officially begun. Last week, breaking, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's holding an unannounced emergency meeting today that will include top financial regulators. The meeting will be closed to the public. Net result, the Fed's balance sheet has grown $400 billion in the last two weeks to bail out the banking system globally. Meanwhile, money is flooding out of banks into money market funds, going to $5.1 trillion. But what happens next? The bond market's predicting the Fed will pause in May and then start dropping interest rates rapidly. That's going to flush the $5 trillion out of the money market funds into the stock market. Buy these five stocks for instant profits now. Central banks are really screwed and they're printing money rapidly. Year-to-date return for our high-risk portfolio is sitting at 20.57%. Our total return from 2021 to 2023 is 270%. That means we're outperforming the S&P 500's 8.5% return by 3,066%. Our high-risk portfolio in March is up 4.48%. Let's look at the high-risk portfolio allocation right now. We just did a trade alert today. Currently, every unit of investment costs $3,804. All members follow the same ratio, so we get the same results over time. On the defensive side, we topped up slightly with UVXY at 42 shares or just around 5% of the portfolio. And again, up top, if you're in the membership area, you can punch in how much money you want to invest. It does the arithmetic and automatically tells you how many shares to buy so you get the right ratios. We're long U.S. Treasuries TMF. That's the TLT times three with 98 shares coming in at around 21% of the portfolio. And again, that's our defensive side. If we're about to have a mega crash, credit crunch and recession, uh, those are the products that are gonna make us money. That's not my base case though, and why we have a lot more capital in the offense. We're long coin with 17 shares at 29% of the portfolio. We're long FNGU with 14 shares at 33% of the portfolio. And we're long NRGU with one share at 10% of the portfolio. Now, COIN is our play into digital currencies. It's the rebellion against the system where governments spend trillions of dollars they don't have. And it's just getting worse and worse every single year for all major countries. FNGU are the big tech giants who are about to have massive breakthroughs with AI. The AI is getting out of control. And if you want exposure to the top holders of AI technology, buy FNGU, which gives you these big tech giants leverage times three. Now, NRGU is the big oil and gas companies leverage times three. If you've noticed what Warren Buffett's doing lately, he's loading up on NRG. About a third, uh, just a bit over a third of his portfolio is either in banks or oil and gas companies. Now, we like the oil and gas for a better return. So if we look at this, uh, essentially, we're about 60% long tech between Coinbase and FNGU. We've got a small oil hedge, leverage times three with NRGU. And I do think we'll want to increase that slightly soon. We've got the safety play in treasuries, betting that interest rates are about to fall because the Fed's going to cut interest rates and that we're about to have a global slowdown with TMF. And if all things break loose and and we start to get a big rapid crash, we have a small hedge in UVXY. If we get fearful that things are getting far worse with the banking system and the treasury is not going to be able to respond to it, we could add to UVXY. So more on that to come. Here's a look at our track record. Uh, Last year, we were up as much as 55%. We gave a lot of that back in the winter uh, with some surprises to Uh, to the energy markets, Uh, but we're picking back those gains quickly this month and sitting on a 5% return for March. Now, if you want to be more conservative and play a very similar strategy, but just a lot more safely, we have the safe growth portfolio. It's up 5% in March in 2023, and it's got a twice the size hedge in treasuries sitting at 44% with TMF. Uh, Rather than being long FNGU, we're playing Asia. Asia is a great setup when interest rates are very high and the dollar is highly valued against other currencies. So we have EDC, that's EEM times three. 
rather than the NASDAQ, I like uh, the safe play with GBTC, that's BTC at 22 shares. And then we have a bit bigger inflation hedge, a little bit closer to Buffett's uh, with NRGU coming in at 17%. Its return this year is at 4% and had a similar return as the high-risk portfolio the last year. This portfolio has been going on for a year longer uh, and did a 25% return in 2019. 2020, we played it safe, made 4%. 2021, 25%. Last year, we gave back 25%, but this year, we're already back up 4%. And if you want to learn more, call Dean now at 505-322-7515. Okay, so here's what's happened to the futures curve, predicting what the federal funds rate will do ever since the uh, banking crisis began developing. And it started with a few banks in the US, but it's now spreading globally. And we're seeing this in who's borrowing money from the Fed's overnight emergency systems. Uh, But you can see the market's now priced in no more rate hikes and rapid rate cuts. And this is going to be to get money to stop pouring out of banks which are going after that 5% money market yield, which again is going to get cut as the federal funds rate goes down. Here's a look at the extraordinary liquidity liquidity and lending facilities. And what's critical here is the breakdown. A lot of this money is heading out of the country. So we saw Credit Suisse collapse. Deutsche Bank's uh, CDS spreads are going out of control. Uh, There's just a global problem for banks Uh, that have liquidity problems. Essentially, they all bought bonds. Bonds went underwater as central banks jacked up interest rates. And now if too many people want their money out at once, the banks can't get out without taking a loss on the bond. So it's forcing the central banks to open up massive lines of credit to, uh, to central banks and banks so that they remain liquid and don't dump their bonds, which would, of course, collapse government's ability to spend money. So there's a lot of pressure to open up liquidity and drop interest rates right now. And again, there's that Fed's balance sheet. Uh, Six months of quantitative tightening reversed in two weeks. And they're likely just getting started. Now, here's the key. For central banks to drop interest rates, they have to have falling inflation. All leading indicators point to the next six months dramatically showing a reduction in inflation. So it's going to be the perfect time for the Fed to pause and start dropping interest rates as inflation falls rapidly. But we got to be careful because this trend will likely last for about six to 12 months. And then China's reopening is going to finally start impacting markets and we're going to have another wave of inflation. So we've built a small hedge into oil today and we'll likely double or triple that in the coming uh several quarters, anticipating that China's reopening will finally start putting pressure on the oil markets. And again, that's one of the key barometers of inflation. This is another look at predicting inflation. We've got the M2 supply, which is now going back up, Uh, but you can see it's giving us a headwind of about 12 to 16 months of falling inflation based on the money supply being dramatically reduced. PPI, CPI are both following that lower. So this is going to be the perfect time for the Fed to pivot. And this is going to make interest rates fall and be very bullish for risk assets. Another way to predict inflation is to look at the euro dollar curve. And it's also predicting not just a a flattening of inflation, but a crash in inflation. And again, if we think bond yields are about to fall, things like digital currencies and tech stocks are going to fly. Uh, But as we're going to get a steepening yield curve from the federal funds rate getting dragged down much lower, we're likely to also see a bull market in commodities. If we look at China and Germany as a leading indicator, we can see China's inflation from the PPI standpoint uh, has been back to normal for quite some time. And now we're seeing Germany's PPI following suit. If we look at job postings, same picture. We still have elevated job posting in the services sector, but everything else has crashed. We're heading towards uh, lots of layoffs if the Fed doesn't get careful here and pivot. And a reminder, we're in a time period that's unlike any other in history. This is the first time where the US government debt to GDP, the earnings price ratio, and the consumer price index are all at extreme levels. So they just don't have the tools they had in the past uh, to fight inflation without collapsing the debt bubble. So unless the Biden administration wants to 
balance the budget. They're not going to be able to get away with this current policy of having high interest rates at the federal funds rate. Now, do we think we're hitting a recession imminently? Jeffrey Gunlock says it could be months away. I'm just not seeing it. We're seeing housing sales rebound. Um, and we've got $5 trillion sitting in money markets. It's going to get squished out when the Fed pulls those interest rates down. U.S. consumer spending is still at very high levels, uh, hitting a new record. The balance of trade slowing down, which is good for, of course, having less inflation. Retail sales is flat, but still elevated. It's not crashing. Consumer credit, despite this uh, relative panic, is still growing. Bank credit's still growing. And now we got China's PMI is going back above 50. So we're not seeing an, uh, a recession in the, in the near future as Chinese imports and exports are also, once again, off the charts as they're aggressively printing money. Let's break this trade alert down step by step. So per unit with the high risk portfolio, you'd be buying 17 shares of coin. Here's a look at the chart. Uh, past month, it's flat. It was up a bit till the Wells notice was served. We do believe they'll get around that with probably a fine. Uh, but it's down 65% in the past year. Again, we're, we're entering a new cycle where everything that worked in the last year and a half will be the opposite this year. So we wanna be along these duration assets. One of the key assets in coin is ETH. And you can see it's up 10% in the last month, even with all this negative news and governments going after this asset class. In fact, in the last five years, uh, this is one of the best performing assets in history. And again, the main reason we like digital currencies is we believe governments can't help but grow debt to sustain their activities. And here's just a look at the history of growth debt since 1970. Uh, it rarely, rarely goes down. And when it does, it goes back up even faster. We just went through one of those rare periods where the money si supply uh, slowed down. But as we need to grow the debt, they're going to have to push the liquidity back into the markets. And here's the U.S. federal budget deficit projection, uh, which is dramatically less than reality. We're looking at more like a $1.6 trillion deficit in 2023, not $1 trillion. By the time we're in 2032, we'll probably be running three to four trillion dollar deficits. So we're going to have to live in a world with higher inflation uh, to keep all these government entit entitlements intact. Now, this is digital currency cycle chart that perfectly lines up with bond interest rates. Bond interest rates are way, way too high out of cycle and are likely going to crash until about 2025. So we've got the perfect setup to send BTC to 200,000 or greater. Okay, next play. Uh, the main thing that would f screw up our whole plans would be too much inflation coming back, forcing the central banks to make a hard decision to keep monetary policy tight. And what would likely cause that would be oil going back above 100. If oil is going anywhere towards that level, NRG is going to make a ton of money. So that's your hedge against inflation. Here's a look at the chart. In the last month, it is essentially flat. In the last year to date, it's down 9%. And in the last five years, it's down 65. Uh, but it's had run-ups in the six to $800 range uh, twice in the last year and a half. Here's a look at oil. And you can see it's starting to bottom out and get strong here. Uh, if the US tries to refill its strategic petroleum reserve and China gets full-blown reopen, which is slowly happening, their travel still way slower than you'd anticipate. Uh, this is gonna go right back up towards the 80 to $100 range and drive NRGU higher. So we love this as a key hedge right now. We're out of boil. This one didn't make money for us this time. We had warm weather, huge oversupply. And we got out of this because we don't see an immediate uh, catalyst to make it do really well compared to oil. So we're out of boil. We made a lot of money on it twice last year. The third time was a failure, and we did add to it once. I think this winter, if the war in Europe is still going on, it might have uh, a way to make us a good money uh, again, but probably not till this winter. So for now, we're into NRGU for the inflation hedge. Just a mega collapse in this asset. Crash insurance, buy 42 shares of UVXY. Uh, we're finally seeing UVXY behave properly, giving you about 10 times the return 
uh, that's the spy goes down, which is what we like and what it wasn't doing for the last year and a half. So I've added a little bit to this. If I get very fearful of a big recessionary credit crunch crash, uh, I'd like to get us up towards 10 to 20 percent on this. For now, we're in the four to five percent range and just hanging on with a small position. Uh, but this product, again, has had a rough year. Um, but again, here's why we like it. When there's a massive stock market crash, such as March 2020, when the world went in lockdown, UVXY went up 1,000% when the S&P 500 went down 25 in a month. So that means if you had 10% of your portfolio, your entire portfolio doubled while your stock position only lost 25%. And again, that takes a very rare crash to pull off that type of pro, uh, return. This is just comparing the VIX from 2008 to today. Uh, the only thing I would say that could create a replication of, of what we're seeing in 2008 would either be nuclear war in Europe, which nobody's pricing in obviously to markets, or uh, inflation just staying elevated and not coming down and even resurging higher. That would certainly be detrimental to markets right now. But my data shows inflation should fall hard for about six to 18 months. Uh, and again, that's gonna be potentially shortened by how much money central banks have to print right now to bail out the banks. Bonds, buy 98 shares of TMF, the deflation hedge. We're betting interest rates are gonna fall because uh, inflation's falling, plus the Fed's gonna drop the federal funds rate, which will bring down the whole curve. TMF's up 8% in the past month, down 50% in the last year, and it's up 3% on the TLT. Now, again, TMF is just a leveraged product on the TLT, down 21% in the last year. Let's look at some other bond markets that fuel the stock market. We got the LQD investment grade bond looking healthy, uh, up 2% in the last month after being down 10% in the past year. The junk bond market, uh, which we've seen a lot less issuance because of these ultra high interest rates, uh, still hanging in there, not crashing or collapsing down uh, 0.7 in the last month and only down 10% in the past year. Now let's look at some of the individual government bonds. The three month uh, is flat and actually down 2% in the last month. So this is predicting that the federal funds rate is done. We're, we're basically even with the federal's fund rate on the three month. Uh, but this is one that went skyrocketing up in the past year to 800 uh, by 800%. And this was, of course, forced up by the Fed hiking interest rates up at the fastest pace in history. The two-year is already way below the federal funds rate by 75 basis points and has collapsed 15% in the last month. Uh, again, this one was rocketed up forcefully by the federal funds rate. The 10-year, uh, again, has fallen even more than the rest of the curve down 10% in lower yields over the last month after rising 48% in the past year. If we look at some of the more leading indicators, uh, such as lumber futures, this is down 11% in the last month and 60% in the past year, indicating that inflation is coming down. Copper, flat in the last month, even with China reopening, and down 12% in the past year. Baltic Dry Index, the cost to ship commodities between continents is down 40% in the past year. Uh, and you can see it's in line with historical levels. So it's back to normal. Wheat futures flat, even with a lot of the supply getting destroyed by the war and down 28% in the last year. We're not currently in the US dollar, but let's take a look at the DXY index falling from 105 to 102. Uh, we believe this will probably bottom out in the 90 to 80 range by 2025, and that's where we're gonna to wanna to take massive, massive profits off of treasuries, digital currencies, and tech stocks. Here's a look at it in the past year. You can see it rocketed as high as 112.5 and has come back down. Uh, this is the yen versus the dollar, uh, starting to stabilize after being dramatically devalued last year. It's starting to strengthen a bit. And again, this is all because inflation's coming back down. China's currency has been making some interesting moves, uh, but all in all, flat in the past month and has only devalued against the dollar in total by 8% in the past year. Now we can see it was worse uh, by October, but now the Chinese Yuan is starting to strengthen against the dollar. Stocks, 14 shares of the tech giants, FNGU. 
Never been a more appealing reason to get long these stocks uh, since the conception of ChatGBT, which was gobbled up by Microsoft. All these big tech giants have AI coming alive right now. People like Elon Musk uh, and a bunch of these tech giants and AI experts are putting out a, a waiver to try to stop development now uh, beyond this chat GBT4, which is going to revolutionize the world. So very exciting time. Hopefully it doesn't end humanity, uh, but if you wanna get rich from that, and sorry, we lost my monitor there. Uh, F and G is your way to play that. Excuse me, guys, we got a little technical. There it is. F and G is up 19% in the past month after crashing 60% in the past year. Again, I believe this will top out around 2025 for massive gains. The S&P 500, despite all the doom and gloom, is flat over the last month and only down 11% in the past year. The NASDAQ's up 5% in the past month and now only down 13.8% in the past year. We're coming into a market cycle where emerging markets will likely outperform U.S. markets. And so this chart shows you that often these, uh, these cycles last uh, shorter, but you get some pretty extreme returns. So we're, we're long EEM in the safe growth portfolio with the product EDC. So it's EEM times three, down 15% in the past year and up 1.75% in the past month. Europe, we're looking for contagion from the war. No signs of it. Their stock market's doing just fine and their economy is doing much better than expected. Uh, down less than all the other indexes in the past year. Now, when we get back into the inflation play, probably in about six to 12 months aggressively, we'll also consider some products like uranium with ticker URA, down 6% in the last month and down 25% in the past year. We'll look at rare earth metals, which gives us exposure to, to things like lithium for car batteries and phone batteries, uh, which again is all controlled by China, down 5% in the last month and 33% in the last year. If you want more information, call Dean now at 505-322-7515. That is the end of the presentation. So now I'll go into Q&E. And uh, after throwing up our disclaimers, I'm going to go back to the trade alert and then take questions. We have quite a big uh, crowd live. Uh, George says, is UVXY scheduled to do a re reverse stock split soon? I'm not sure, but I'll look, I'll check on it. And if it does, uh, it won't change what you do. You'll already have the right exposure. So um, whether they uh, reverse or split, it doesn't mean you change anything. It just means I'll go either cut the shares in half or double them in the calculator. The, the dollar value will be exactly the same. So you won't have to to do anything on your end. Uh, a lot of people say, should I hold on to boil indefinitely? No, follow the trading plan at all times with no exceptions and don't hang on to losers just because you feel bad you lost money on it. And I know there's a lot of you out there who probably went more aggressive on boil than the trading plan and now you just want to hang on to it. Um, absolutely don't do that. Switch to NRGU. I think that one has an immediate profit potential. Yeah, so to make the trade alert today, I had to double the ratio. Uh, otherwise, energy was going to be uh, like 40% of, of the high risk of the safe growth. So here's what I did just mechanically to do the trade alert. The first thing I did is I went into the calculator and I doubled all the shares. So the ratio didn't change, uh, but what did happen is the unit cost doubled. Then I was able to go sell off some of the assets and buy NRGU without it being 40% of the total portfolio, which I think is just too aggressive too early because uh, NRG is expensive compared to the other tickers. So that's what I did. And that's why when we teach you to rebalance, we don't tell you sell one of these, two of these and buy four of those. It's much easier just to log into the calculator, look at the total value of your account, punch it in, 
Uh, if any tickers are gone, that means you need to completely sell that. If you have too much, sell those down and then buy the new ones. Gary says, what's the chances they don't raise the debt ceiling? Zero. We got a bunch of cowards in the Republican Party. That's, that's not going to happen. Zero chance. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Taji Tong says is NRG is slightly better than FNG. They're the polar opposites. Um, so Warren Buffett, just to be clear, his portfolio has a massive Apple position. That would be similar to Coin and FNGU. And then he has a huge position in Chevron, Occidental, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. Uh, and that's very similar to NRGU. So those two go go hand in hand. In our high risk portfolio, we're way less hedged against uh, rising interest rates compared to Buffett. Uh, he's about 30 to 40% would be in the oil slash banks slash, you know, Coca-Cola, things like that, that are inflationary. Our, our safe growth product is a little bit closer to his with 17% in our geo. Um, now, again, I think we're still at least a month away, or excuse me, another quarter away before I will get more aggressive and add to our geo. So that's what I'm thinking in terms of when we'll, so I think we've got about three to six months. We're going to see probably things like Coinbase, F and G just scream higher uh, without hurting our oil position. And then I think we're going to see the, the oil get too expensive and then it's going to start to put pressure back on yields. And that's when I think NRG could outperform, but it's good to have the mix. Yeah, so I think what's going to, I think we're about to have a very weird period. So basically, I think the Fed's going to start to cut rates and it's going to steepen the yield curve and it's going to make uh, the whole yield curve fall lower. So I think treasury yields are about to fall in general for the next three to six months. And I think you're going to see the offense go up together, which is rare. You don't usually have oil and tech go up at the same time. And then what I think is going to happen is the inflation is going to get too hot and they're going to have to start tightening again. And then I think the whole offensive side is going to be uh, basically at risk. So if we start seeing oil get back towards uh, 90 to 100, we should probably get worried that the Fed's going to have to tighten again. I, I'm not an expert at the mining stocks. I like the, the GBTC a lot better than the gold products. Ed saying, will that set us up for a big recession? Yeah, I think probably the recession is gonna be 12 to 18 months out and probably happen in 2025. So, but what we wanna see is the yield curve steepening aggressively. And that's usually when you're entering into it. And then unemployment. So the problem is we have really strong labor markets. We have really strong retail and we've got $5 trillion of cash to dump out of money markets. So I'm just not worried about a recession anytime soon. I'm much more worried about the economy reheating too hot and then they have to tighten again. That's what I'm worried about uh, because they essentially globally added so much money to, to the global money supply, it's still there. And they only got away with reducing a tiny bit of it before they're gonna stop. So this is why there's all this hot economy globally. And they, uh, and again, this went from four trillion up to nine trillion. So, so they barely got, uh, they got less than a trillion out of their balance sheet before the whole system collapsed, and they had to add back four hundred billion dollars. So, so basically, they're stuck. They're going to have to let inflation run hot. So we want the. Uh, I like this mix a lot. I basically just don't see any reason to do anything outside of this exact setup. So give me three to six months, we'll likely take some profits off of Coinbase, FNGU, and add it to NRGU, is what I'm thinking will be the next play. Uh, Ed saying, have we seen AI cause layoffs yet? No, there's no layoffs. I mean, the job market is, is very strong, unemployment's very low. The labor force participation rate uh, is, is still lower than pre-lockdown, but Uh, 
Uh, boil maybe in winter if the worst. I don't know. I we'll look at boil. Boils. The problem with boils, we had a warm winter that was way warmer than normal. We had uh, Europe, especially Germany, turn off their industrial sector dramatically. And then they put all sorts of restrictions on using heat to combat the war. And now they, there's just a massive oversupply of natural gas uh, all over the world. So until that starts getting depleted, and uh, so perhaps the end of the war would, would actually help get the use of boil back up. Um, but yeah, energy is, looks like a better play for, for now. China's turning back on, and as you saw, their imports exports are out of control. It just takes a while for that to play out. So here's the credit impulse. Usually China leads the global inflation cycle by about two years. So this is actually predicting we get the inflationary pressure from China uh, towards early 2024. Yeah, the dynamics for boil are not back. So we got Europe got caught off guard with no alternative to boil as the as the war went on uh, began, but now they've adapted to it. So so I just don't see a good reason to be in boil. And I was waiting to make the switch um, until I was a little more confident that uh, basically I wanted to wait till I thought the Fed was going to absolutely pause before I put us into a bigger energy play. And I'm extremely confident the Fed's pausing in May. So I think the commodity markets, the bond markets, and the uh, and the tech stocks are all going to enjoy the Fed pausing. Uh, David's saying, where would you park your cash? Big banks. <laughs> yeah, go to Wells Fargo uh, or Bank of America. If you're over 250, if you're below 250, you have nothing to worry about. And most likely they're going to increase that to half a million to help with the, the bank problem. Yeah, Tom, uh, Rebel is to replace coin and GBTC. So if you want to get a super aggressive position, in Coinbase, you should invest in our private equity firm, Rebel Dividends. We're basically giving you a triple leveraged uh, version of coin. Yeah, yeah, anything below, two, I would, you know, don't have more than 250 in a savings account. Sp split it between multiple banks because you're still FDIC insured for that. Um, now, if you, yeah, I, and I do think they're going to double that in the coming week or two to 500,000. But the problem is that uh, that doesn't fix the problem. It It's like a small Band-Aid. The problem is this. You, if you move to a money market fund, which takes it out of the bank's deposit, it basically lowers their ability to to loan uh, and their liquidity and their ability to buy treasuries, all that is ruined as everybody is saying, oh, I can go get 5% at a money market fund. So the only solution to fix the banking crisis is to drop interest rates a lot. And then what's gonna happen when that occurs is money is gonna get out of money markets and go back to, uh, to other homes, which could be stocks, digital currencies, commodities, or just back to a normal bank account. So that's that's what they have to do, but they're not going to do it unless inflation is falling. Luckily, we're highly confident we've got a, about a six to 12 month run of inflation falling aggressively here by the China cycle, uh, by the M2 cycle, by looking at the euro dollar and then looking at uh, China and Germany's producer price index. So we're and, and then if, if we look at some other if we really break down the CPI, there's a lot of reasons to think it's going to fall for about six to 12 months. And then we're probably going to have some new issues as inflation is going to get hot again. And that'll be lovely as we lead into the next election cycle. So, And 
And the other thing that's going to be happening soon is the Treasury needs to uh, raise a lot of money. They're down to about $168 billion. And they need to get that back up towards five to eight hundred billion. So the second the debt ceiling comes online, a lot of treasure is going to hit the market, and that's going to probably be a big boost for your NRGU position because the market's going to see a ton of money coming in, uh, which will probably stabilize bond yields if not make them rise a little bit, and it's going to make the market predict a lot more money flooding into the economy, which would increase oil usage. All right, so the M2, uh, they've been decreasing the money supply for about two years, and it leads everything by about 16 months. So they've basically dragged the red line 16 months ahead of the CPI and PPI to show that it's correlated. And so the this is predicting we're going to uh, basically crash the CPI for about another year. But the, the catch is this chart's not updated. Now the M2 supply is going right back up. So we got about a year, I think we've got about a, around a year of falling inflation and then inflation is gonna come back. And, and then we're gonna probably have to tighten monetary policy. David Green says, I hear small banks will eventually go away and move very large banks. That's been the trend for about 80 years. The big banks are gobbling up the small ones. Um, So, so yeah, that's definitely been the, the trend. The banks have generally underperformed the market, so I'm not a big fan of buying the banks. And they've got a big threat, which is uh, ETH, it is basically replacing their whole financial system, uh, but much more efficiently without it being unfair to, to certain parties. So that's kind of our play on technology and the banking system in one place is, is uh, COIN or ETH. So yeah, we waited about three months for this trailer. We've been talking about it forever. Uh, basically, I just really wanted to be highly confident the Fed was going to pause before we added uh, NRGU. And that moment in time is now. I'm uh, extremely confident May will have a uh, pause on rate hikes. Thoughts on the CBDC? It's coming. Um, they want to control money and be able to control the economy with it. Um, so absolutely. Uh, there's this whole new legislature passing that can spy on you on your social media coming through too. So big government is trying to get bigger and bigger and your rebellion out of that is Coinbase or ETHE or GBTC. Uh, yeah, we're actually, so Aaron's saying, are we looking at a product that would be like a savings account? Yeah, we're actually planning a third product. So we have Rebel Dividends, which is basically a super leveraged bet that digital currency is going to go up in value with the weekly dividend. Uh, we have the uh, DeFi Income Corp, which is doing yield farming to create income. So less growth, but more income. And then the very third product, which will probably launch next uh, winter, most likely at the earliest, is going to be a super high interest rate uh, savings account product where we trade uh, basically stable coins against stable currencies, either the dollar, or the euro or uh, things of that nature. So we would try to outperform money market funds uh, by trading stable coins in this new economy that's that's quickly developing. So yeah, that'll, that'll be the final product we see coming on the private equity side. So yeah, we're still playing GBTC. So I like GBTC for the safe growth product because it's trading at a discount to the underlying asset. Um, so I like to get cheap stuff in the safe growth strategy. Uh, emerging markets is super cheap PE ratios right now. Treasuries are oversold uh, more so than ever in history. And oil and gas is pretty pretty drawn down. Energy is down about 50%. So everything in this portfolio is just cheap. So we're in bargain hunting. Um, if I'm trying to make the most money, I don't think ETHE has a chance to outperform Coinbase. Um, and 
So, so for high risk, I'd rather have coin over ETHE. -E. And then what I'd rather have over coin is Revel dividends because we're giving you a triple leverage product. Uh, so again, once we get a bull market, Rebel dividends will be extremely fun to, to hold a position in, which I think we're on the verge because again, this is finally happening. We're literally two weeks into the next growth of the Fed's balance sheet. Great questions today, guys. Thank you so much. So schedule coming up next week, we have the Rebel Dividends Dividend on Monday and webinar on Tuesday. And we will have the next Portfolio Builder webinar this Wednesday. Uh, there's no important economic data next week, but the week after we get the new CPI print on uh, the 12th of April, which I believe is either Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, so we're positioned for that to come in uh, dropping. So unless it's not dropping, we have no reason to change the portfolio whatsoever. If it's dropping, our prediction that the Fed can pause will play out. So if we see the CPI come in hot April 12th, we'll have to rethink the portfolio slightly. But I find that very unlikely. Yeah, things are pumping for one reason and one reason only. It's because of this. Fed's balance sheet's going back up. Now, a lot of people are going to say this is not QE. Um, and the reason why they say that is because this money is being lent against treasuries to banks at an interest rate. So it's depleting the, uh, the bank's profitability and uh, doesn't really solve the problem. But think one step further. What solves the problem is get the money out of the money markets fund, which means they have to drop interest rates. And the bond futures are already predicting this is going to happen. So that's why markets are super excited, not necessarily because this is happening, but because this has to happen. The interest rates have to be cut. And that's going to bring down the whole bond interest rate curve. So if interest rates go lower, it reprices the value of financial assets higher. The stocks are competing against the future returns of, of other products, such as U.S. Treasuries. So it's been a while. The inflation was hotter and stickier for longer than I thought. Um, and that's why we don't have better returns right now. Uh, but uh, the data has been falling inflation for quite some time now. Uh, if you go to your email and click it, David, it'll replay it. The Rebel webinar. As far as an archive, uh, we do for sure on the channel. I'll have to figure out how to find those and, and send you links. But yesterday, as you can listen to right now, if you just go to your email and click that link. Yes, sir. Okay, very good, guys. Well, we'll see you back twice next week if you're in Rebel Dividends. And once if you're in Portfolio Builder, thank you so much for joining us live. And again, in two weeks, we get the next CPI print, which will be... Uh, probably one of the most watched CPI prints in history because it will be the monumental time where the Fed can finally pause the fastest rate hikes in history and then get ready to start cutting possibly. Again, we need more falling inflation and probably more problems in the banking system for them to actually cut. Um, I'd actually be happier if they just pause for now. But if the banking crisis continues, their only solution will be to cut those interest rates. Okay, thank you guys so much. We'll see you back next week.